My hallelujah belongs to you. So today is a very special day for us and uh, we see how the Lord will take us by his grace and we believe that the Lord is a faithful God. Once you are committed to loving God, once you are committed to loving God, he will manifest himself through you. Please write that statement down. We'll run with it uh, this day. It's only that it is a long sentence. It could have been the topic. <laughs> Once you are committed to loving God, he will manifest himself through you. Everything in the kingdom of God worketh on the basis of love. For every sacrifice or service we do in the house of God to be accepted by God, it must be on the basis of loving him. So we are going to concentrate today on now that desire for God to work through you. That's my going to be my concentration today. So we're going to read a couple of scriptures. But before that, as it's my culture, I want to give you a bite uh, to carry through. There are four types of people that are very hard for God to help. So the reason why I will share with you those people is because one, you are not one of them. Number two is so that you will never become one of them. God desireth to use and to bless a man more than the way man desires to be used by God or to be blessed by God. I need to say that again. God is more committed to you than actually the way we are committed to him. God longeth to bless you and to bless me and to heal us, to restore us, to cause our lives to flourish more than the way even we know. Praise God. But why is it that we find sometimes very difficult for certain things in our lives? Because there are certain things, because the Bible says, with God, everybody write that statement down. With God, not for God. With God, all things are possible. With God, with God, with God, with God, not God alone. Amen. So that means even if God is able to do everything, he is limited at times because of certain issues around our lives and lifestyles that makes it hard for God to help us. What makes hard for God to help a man makes it easy for the enemy to torment the same man. The devil has never been powerful than the way he was. God has never been less or more powerful than the way he was from the beginning. So the manifestations of God in every generation is not determined by God. It is determined by the generation itself. So 
some of the people in the house of God not today and not here there is no amount of prayer from a man or the intercession of a man will make God come through their case they have complicated their issues for God to reach them may that never be a portion I say may that never be a portion you need to know ladies and gentlemen it is impossible for any plane no matter what happens for it to land here in Zion City if there is no landing ground true or false there is no amount of prayer that can, can make the, the plane that is coming from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport to come and land here also the same way there is no way a plane can take off from this place apart from a chopper the same way the, the word of God has the working atmosphere. The spirit of God in you has the working atmosphere. There are certain things that are supposed to be constructed by your personal life that makes it easier for God to help you and to intervene in your life. Praise God. So number one type of a person that is very hard for God to help is a prayerless man. Prayerless man. Prayerless man. And prayerless does not mean that people who ask for prayer. When I pray for you, you are not praying. Yes. You can't go far in the walk of this walk in the kingdom of God without a, a lifestyle of prayer. Number one, prayer is a sign of humility. Prayerlessness is a sign of pride and arrogance. Oh yes, you want to show that you can do it without God. So God says, okay, that's all right. He says, apply goes before I fall. Number two, prayerlessness is a sin. Oh yes, prayer is what connects you with the help of God. Prayer is a communion with God. So when you are prayerless, you make it hard for God to help you. You will not be part of those people. Lift your hands and receive the spirit of prayer. Number two is a wordless man. Wordless man. And I am not saying someone-less man. No. In every someone you must green your word. Yes. That's the only way you can be able to say there is a word there. Yes. There are people, the only thing they carry from someone are stories and examples. And the funny things, humor that were made there as icebreakers to make the service. So because sometimes people are very tense in the house. Other people, the only thing they carry is personality of the preacher. I am saying a man that settles with the word. The word of God fortifies a man. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The word of God fortifies a man. Now listen to this carefully. Anything that is not fortified by the word can be blown by any wind. Oh sure. You never know a man in good times. You only know a man when things are tough. Everything has broken loose over your life. Now people watch the way you behave. Praise God. Jesus told Peter and the other disciples after some guys left his ministry. Jesus asked Peter, why you left us? You would have gone. One of the things that Peter talked about, number one, is to whom else? That is, G Peter connection was not to the ministry of Jesus. Was to Jesus. One. Number two, the word of life. Because men are made by words. So if you are wordless, you have no ground. Sorry, God have no ground to help you. Lift your hand everybody. Say father I will fill my life. With the word of God. Colossians 3.16. Say the word of God. Will not live with me. In the house. As a King James Old or Gideon Bible. 
that I was given in school. So the word is with you. Written. But the word of God should dwell. Dwell. Make a habitation in you. That means you are not only supposed to read the Bible. You are supposed to eat the Bible. Hmm. Glory to God. Amen. Lift your hand. Your face will change. Don't worry. So you, you, you know I will still do good things for you. Now I'm giving you the sweet nutrition. Is that okay? Praise God. Amen. Say the word of the Lord. Will dwell, in me. will dwell in me richly. That means the word should have a dominance in your life. Glory to God. Amen. So, number three is a proud man. And men here have no gender. Today is Father's Day, so don't think that we are dealing with men. <laughs> Some will go and say, Ah, thank you, Father. Pastor never mentioned uh, whom I. <laughs> No, we are talking of every believer beginning with all of us. Number three is a proud man. A proud man. A proud man. If you want to know how God deals with the pride, you number one look at the, the father of pride, the devil. Number two, look at Nebuchadnezzar. Number three, those are the trills of people, the trio of the people that saw the roughness of their pride on their real issue. The other one is Herod. God does not entertain any form of pride. Yes. And pride is not a walking style. Pride is not a speaking. Pride is, an, as, is a condition of the spirit. Is, is something in you. There are people that are proud though they don't say. The other day I, I found myself, you know, just asking the Lord just to help me to live a life of appreciating others. You, you know, it sounds very simple, but it's a very powerful thing. How do you feel when another person is doing well? When you see a man with a, a car or a house or like now the tent that is at the stadium and it is not yours. <laughs> it's not your church. You, you only own a pro box. So can, can, you, can your heart bless that person and be happy that at least your brother has something you don't have? I'm telling you the truth. Not many people have reached that level. Sometimes we don't say. But something in you develops. You, 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 you begin to gauge. I am, I'm, I am prayerful than this person. I fast more than this person. What actually have made many people stay on the ground? It's not the devil. It's the small things that are hidden in our hearts. Many people can celebrate others. You see somebody is sitting on a throne you which you are the one sitting there. No wonder people will never reach there. Train yourself. Please put your hand here. Say, Father, give me a heart. Father, give me a, heart. A, humble a humble spirit. An appreciative spirit. An appreciative. To appreciate others. To, appreciate to accept others. others. To celebrate others. Celebrate including non-believers who are not born again. Don't always think that because somebody has built a big house in the city and he is not a member of your church and he, does not, he is not born again that he is a thief. No. There are people who rise by hard work. Hallelujah. Amen. I really celebrate you. I am serious. Number four. Number four. A carnal man. 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 
That is the biggest challenge you are having right now in the house of God. Yeah. When the world is becoming more wicked and more wicked uh, and more churchy. If there is a word like that. The world is becoming more churchy. Hata mikutano wenye watu watakunywa pombe na wafanya vitu zingine wanaitisha maombi. Yeah. Wanasema man of God kuja utuombe. Alafu ukituombea wa unaweza enda. <laughs> Because zile vitu zitafanyo after that. It will be the devil life. So there are people are, you know, it's very hard for you now, especially in Kenya, to go to any matatu and tell them with the accident happening, that let's pray, they refuse. But the more the world is becoming church, that's why the people are becoming harder to come to church because the world is becoming more, the church is becoming worldly and carnal. The things that excite people are not spiritual things. But not here. It is hard for God to help a carnal man. It's very hard. He said a carnal man receives nothing from the Lord. And he says in Romans chapter number 8 that carnality is an enmity to God. And carnality is death. 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 Kifo. Carnality is death. So train yourself to be spiritual. Because you are already a spirit. So when you are not functioning spiritually, you are allowing your spiritual senses to be over dominated by the carnal kind of senses. Life is not about what you taste, what you see, what you touch, what you feel. Life is more than that. Life is spiritual. Praise God. Number five and the last two one for now. A lazy man. Mtu muzembe. Lazy in prayer. Lazy in working. Lazy in, in, in studying the word. Lazy in fellowship. Lazy in dressing. Lazy in working. Is a spirit. Is a spirit. Is a spirit. The only joy and delight is eating. Eating. It becomes very hard. Why? Because God is a worker. Any lazy person has no DNA of God. He said, God worked till now. John chapter number 9. And I'm still working myself. The Lord help us. Lift your hand. Say for the five things. Just look at them please. Just look at them. Those five things. Everybody say, Lord help me. To be prayerful to be full of the world, to be a humble person, a spiritual man, and a diligent believer. Praise the Lord. You, be, you make it hard for the devil when you do the opposite of those things. In Acts chapter number 1, the Bible says, "Ye shall receive power. Once the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. Witnesses means a proof givers. I am a witness. I, I am a witness. So now we shall not be witnesses of the Holy Spirit. We shall be witnesses of the death and the resurrection of Christ. We shall be witnesses. And I will show you that in a few minutes so that we see the direction God will take us. We shall be witnesses that this life in the natural can be affected by another life in the supernatural. When the church becomes natural, it loses its impact on the natural. When the church becomes natural, a denomination, a place to gather on Sunday only, that church loses its impact in the natural. 
that will never be your portion so God came in natural man introduced divinity in the natural man so that the natural man can affect the natural world with the supernatural abilities everywhere the supernatural of God is not manifesting through God's people something will be missing in that generation or that place you get it clear as we move on it will help you now in Ezekiel 37 Ezekiel 37 every place where God locates a need he has enough power to change the need Everywhere God locates a need, there is in, he has enough power power to change or transform the need. What he does not have is the legalization. What he does not have is the legal body to function in that realm though he is powerful. Please let me hand off you serious people. Glory to God. Now that will make a serious believer take life very seriously. That means the devil can have a, 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 an upper hand. Though he was created by God, when the creator is helpless. <clears throat> Lift your hand. <clears throat> Say, Father, as I love you, I purpose to allow you to work through me to affect my generation. So God saw the condition of the children of Israel. Because if you read from verse number 11, continue, we are in verse 1, my daughter. Uh, you will realize, we are still in verse 1 will realize what God was talking about. He was looking at the condition of his people, the children of Israel. He had the capacity to change the condition of the children of Israel. But the condition of the children of Israel was in the natural. And from Genesis chapter number 1 and 2, there is no way God can interfere with the lower side of life on earth without a human vessel. So what did God do? God of heaven located a prophet. This thing began from Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 2. Please go study. Please go study. Wish somebody will. Can you get chapter 2 for us? Chapter 2 for us. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1. Yes. And he said unto me, son of man, Stand upon the feet and I will speak unto thee. I declare today by the hand of Jehovah, whatever has placed you down in your family, in your company, in your organization, in this ministry, where you are supposed to influence your, in your community, a couple shagida getea, I release grace for you to stand. I say I release grace for you to stand. People can character assassinate you because you are their savior. So long as you are seated, God cannot help you. God cannot help the community. You need, you need to know the bigger part of the church is not the church. It's the community. God never raised a church for the church. God raised a church for the community. Glory to God. We are the only living things on the face of the earth with the privilege to commune with the deity. I need to say that again. May God help us. I say may God help us. We are the only living thing on the face of the earth that were given capacity to operate in two realms. No matter how powerful a lion is, it cannot go beyond. So we, we are given an operation to operate in the realm of the spirit. That, that means because we are a spirit. Everybody say I am a spirit. And I live in the body. Say, I am a spirit. I live in the body. Say, I am a spirit. 
I live in a body. Now, my body, my body gives me legal rights to function on earth. My spirit gives me legal rights to function in the spirit, the realm of spirits. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. So, if God finds a need, for example, something to handle here, heaven is limited until it locates a portal. You need to be a solution where God has placed you by supernatural gift. If you choose to go for prayer three days, you will return in a solution for your organization. Some people here it will be too hard for any organization to sack them because we have something that the world does not have. Let me tell you, if we don't change these things, it's going to be too bad because the first people we are going to lose is not the world, it's our children. I'm telling you the truth. Nobody wants to follow something that has no results. And you can't get results naturally. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. Desire. Desire. Well, uh, thank you so much for taking your time to uh, watch uh, the prophetic uh, voice. We are so grateful that you become part of this family. May the Lord bless you and the peace of God be upon your life. If you're there and you have heard the word of God in the book of Psalms 119, the Bible says the entrance of God's words bring forth the light. And faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. If you're there and you're not born again, would want to introduce you to Christ who have changed our lives, who is the answer and the solution to all human problems on the face of the earth. When he comes into your life, he'll give you peace. He will give you joy. He will give you direction. He will deposit the wisdom that created the heaven and the earth upon your life. Therefore, if you're there and you're not born again, just repeat after me, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Direct my life. Guide me from this day and be the Lord over my life. Now that you are born again and you're a child of God, look for a church, a Bible-believing church, and join a family of believers and grow and you'll be taught how to walk in this walk of faith. You are blessed. I also want to take this opportunity to uh, speak a blessing and make a prayer to all of you that took time to watch and to be part of this program. Because the purpose of the word of God is to generate faith in you. It brings forth light. And through that faith of what you have heard, now I want to connect with your faith and believe God for a change and a turnaround in your life. Job said that change is possible. And he said, I wait until my change will come. And through what you have heard, you can initiate that change in your life. Therefore, I want to pray for you. And now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, wherever you are watching, in Jesus' precious name, may that word, the word of God, which the Bible says it is light and life, let it bring life in your life. Let it bring light in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I minister healing into your body. I minister healing into your finances, into your family, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Whatever you may be going through, I want to let you know that God is able to change your situation in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Wherever you are, may that word of God lift you. May that word of God give you direction in the mighty name of Jesus the son of the living God. Whatever we are praying together, believe God that it has changed and the Lord have done it. Confess it and let us hear your testimony of what the Lord has done. May the Lord bless you. Shalom. Peace. God be together with you. If you are in a new camp, Join us every Sunday uh, for our two powerful park services, 7.30 and 9.30 at Zion City. We are below the slaughterhouse and next to the prison farm. And wherever you are, we welcome you to our prophetic deliverance service every Thursday here on Z uh, Zion City ground in Anyuki City. Uh, Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. A wonderful time. Come and hear what God is doing through uh, his word and through the prophetic voice and your life will never be the same again. Our materials are available. Our four books are available. You can make your order through the number that uh, is on your screen 
and you can always call us and be part of this great family and be a partner with what God is doing through the prophetic voice that we may reach more people and many people in the face of the earth. May the Lord bless you. We love you. Shalom. See you again on Wednesday, 8.30 here on NBCI TV. We love you.